okay. That was a little bit better. That was a little bit more what I expected the other night, only tonight. The Mavericks get back on their winning ways with a 138-122 win on the road. That moves them to 4-0 and on the road this season as they beat the Memphis Grizzlies. And, you know, it's a good bounce-back win for the Mavericks. The bench showed up to play. You had eight different Mavericks score in double figures. That is a solid bounce back considering where this team was just 24 hours ago. And I'm I'm relieved that they eventually pulled away. It was still a little closer than I wanted. Memphis still shot the ball at way too high of a percentage. Memphis is a dreadful three-point shooting team as well, but you would not have guessed that based on how this game was progressing for a while. Now, eventually it kind of returned back to the median but in the first quarter quarter and a half Memphis was shooting lights out and they still shot well 33 percent on the game for Memphis 12 of 36 Dallas goes 43 percent much better for Dallas there Seth Curry was cooking at one point I think he had three straight threes at one point and the last one of which was just ridiculous a tipped pass in transition he tracks it down in the corner splashes his third straight three he had 16 at half wound up with 16 for the game uh, you had a lot of bounce back guys. A couple guys set season highs. Uh, I notice I have an inconsistency with my formatting, but you know what? Whatever. We're just going to roll with it at this point. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., he took the criticism to heart, and he bounced back after what was probably his worst game of the year. I wanted to say Monday, but that's obviously not right. Friday night, his worst game of the year against the Knicks. He bounced back with a 20-point game. That is his season high here, and he did it in pretty efficient form really tim hardaway jr 22 minutes 20 points one assist seven of 14 from the field five of nine from three and he even completed a four point play at one point in the second quarter so yeah he he bounced back well good for him you know i was i was throwing all kinds of dirt in his face and saying you know he was laying down bricks as if he was building a home for habitat for humanity that was how he played 24 hours ago but he responded so good for him doesn't necessarily change how I feel about him because you're going to get the good games like this every now and then. I just think you're going to have to go through a lot of mediocrity or even downright ugly games before you get them. So on the nights it's there, it's nice. So between him and the bench, the Mavericks bench as a whole, as I said, you got eight guys scoring in double figures. The bench was much better for the Mavericks in this game. I still have major concerns with Dwight Powell, but he was better as well. 29 minutes, 11 points, seven rebounds. 5 of 8 shooting, uh, 1 of 3 at the line, 2 blocks, 2 steals. He bounced back, but defensively, I just just don't feel good about who he's got to guard at all. Valachunas really gave him problems. Really, any big man guarding that he has to guard in the post is going to give him problems, but it is what it is. Uh, Luka was Luka. Didn't even have to play in the fourth quarter. 29 minutes, 24 points, 14 boards. He's rebounding out of his mind right now, and he's leading the break as a result. And that's awesome because that makes the Mavericks much more dynamic. It's an element they didn't have a ton of as a team last year. Eight eight assists as well. Had he played in the third, or excuse me, the fourth quarter, he probably gets it, but Dallas didn't really need him to. Nine of 16 from the field, two of six from three, four or five at the line, and two steals. Also, the turnover numbers are farther down as well. Only two on the night. Much better in that regard. Uh, I already mentioned Curry. Dodo had 11 points. Kleba had 11 points. Uh, Boban got the play as well, got the start in this game, in fact, because this was the first rest game for Kristaps Porzingis. Now, I know it was originally presented as if Porzingis was, like, they listed as a left knee injury on the Bleacher Report update that went out, and they that's, that's a ridiculous thing to say. They just know that you can't say load management. Load management is a dirty word at this point in the NBA. I mean, look at the Clippers getting a $50,000 fine for resting Kawhi Leonard. It's, it's stupid. It's ridiculous. I get that they don't like having, uh, in, ca- in those cases, that was a premier game, right? It was against the Bucks. It was against the reigning MVP. And so they don't want premier games ruined by superstars sitting out because of rest. Well, Dallas rested Kristaps Porzingis. We know he's going to miss 15 to 20 games on the year. Based on that alone, just based on taking a precautious route and making sure that he is good and ready to go for as many games as he can this season. 
I have no problem with that at all. This was a good game to rest him, and I've been saying this was going to be a Bulbon game. Now, he still only got 16 minutes despite the start. Nine points, five rebounds, two assists. Uh, had a block and a steal as well. So there was still a lot to like there from Bulbon. I would have liked to have seen some more minutes for him, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, my guy, 44 Jacks off the bench as well. He had a very strong game. He had a season high as well, 17 points. Four boards, six of 10 shooting, four of seven from three. One of two at the line, but whatever. Uh, Jackson bounced back just like Hardaway bounced back, although Jackson only got a handful of minutes compared to Hardaway getting 25 last night. So it is what it is. Brunson, I thought, was good. 13 points in 19 minutes, two rebounds, four assists, uh, two steals as well, six of eight shooting. That was that was arguably Brunson's best game of the year in terms of his percentages. You know, I, I mentioned he, him struggling on the year in my last video, and I had someone uh, tell me that I just don't know what I'm talking about, talking about Brunson. As I pointed out in my response, his field goal percentage for the season coming into this game was 36% from the field, 25% from the three-point line, and 53% at the free throw line. His efficiency field goal rating was 41%. That is all significant drop-offs. Those are all significant drop-offs from where he was last season. So, no, Brunson has not had a good season to date. He's not turning the ball over a whole lot, which is great. Even in this game, he had, let's see, he had two turnovers in this game, but he was a plus 15 overall, and that's that's huge. That is huge for Dallas to get him back on track because – Part of what's supposed to make the Dallas bench so good this year is the inclusion of guys like Brunson. That's the kind of guy that they need to lead that second unit and provide some big scoring. Not volume scoring, but timely scoring. And just to kind of manage things, keep things rolling, keep the offense moving, uh, and getting guys to where they need for their shots. You don't get any minutes out of Courtney Lee. Somebody on Twitter uh, talked about, or they, they shared a quote from Carlisle after the game last night against the Knicks, and they asked again why Courtney Lee started for the Mavericks, and Carlisle basically said, well, you know, we needed some toughness out there, and Courtney Lee's one of our, our toughest guys. Courtney Lee played five minutes in the game. That's the third time this year he has started, I believe, and then played about five to six minutes. So I responded with, the only thing that's tough is seeing him out on the court after the first five minutes of the game because his ass never gets off the bench. That's pretty much, in a nutshell, what we do with Courtney Lee. Now, he did get a bucket in the game last night, but I, I don't know what we're doing there. I don't know why we roll him out as a starter. Still no Berea here. Brokoff got three minutes at the very end of the game, so good for him. Um, it, it's a good bounce-back win for Dallas. There's not a whole lot to dive into. Field goal percentage, you still let Memphis shoot way too high of a field goal percentage, 53% from the field. Again, their three-point percentage wasn't good. Dallas shot 54% for what it's worth. 43% for Dallas from three, 33 for Memphis, 80% for Dallas at the line, uh, and Dallas shot 20 free throws. Memphis shot 71% on 14 free throws. Turnovers, Dallas slightly won that edge, 14-15. to 15. Dallas out-assisted again, 27-31. to 31. Rebounds, Dallas won on the glass tonight, and that that felt really important. They won 47-39, so pretty much eight-board advantage there, and they had two offense, or two extra offensive rebounds at a 12-10 advantage. So that gives them opportunity there. Uh, Memphis did get more blocks, 6-5. A lot more fouls by Memphis, um, eight more fouls by them in that regard. So it's one of those things. Dallas has been much looser on the road this year. Now, you could very easily say, hey, they haven't had to play anybody real yet on the road. I would not argue that in the slightest bit because, yeah, you went to New Orleans. New Orleans, uh, you know what? I, rewind, rewind. Take that back. I said they played no one on the road. I think, I think New Orleans is a quality team. I think they're a team that's going to be in the thick of the playoff hunt. Therefore, I'm going to withdraw my previous statement. That was a quality win. Uh, then you beat the Cavs. On the road, let's see. Who else did they have to beat on the road before this? Memphis. There's one more. As I try and rewind over the first little bit of it. This is annoying me that it's uh, slipping my mind. But the point is, Dallas has been really good on the road this year. And it's just a matter of getting loose at home to the same extent 
getting to the point where they can actually keep the offense moving. The Nuggets! Why did I forget the Nuggets? Son of a bitch. Okay, yes, the Nuggets, of course. Son of a... For some reason, I almost, for a second... I didn't forget the game. I keep flipping them with Utah sometimes. And I think it's just because their teams kind of remind me of one another a little bit. But I digress. So, okay, two quality wins on the road. Screw everything I was saying about arguing not a lot of quality wins on the road. Completely throw it out the window. Uh, yeah, garbage opinion, DDP. Garbage opinion. Just forget I even said that. Two quality wins, two weaker wins uh, in terms of the quality of opponent with the Cavaliers and with now the, um, the Grizzlies. Dallas now will have a real test on their hands, though. They have to go... Let's see, Monday night. So they got an off day now. They got to go Monday night to Boston on the road. Now, why is that a challenge? Well, Boston has won seven games in a row. They are white hot, although they did just lose today to the Spurs. Or sorry, they lost in the game against the Spurs. They beat the Spurs handily in San Antonio. I think it was like 134 to 115, but they lost Gordon Hayward uh, for... We don't know how long yet. He We fractured his left hand. That's a shame because he was having a great year to start the season. Uh, he was he was off to a great start, very efficient, and he was a really good feel-good story around the league for coming back you know, from his injury, his gruesome injury two years ago. So hopefully he's not out too long. Obviously he's going to miss this game regardless. That's going to be huge for Dallas because he feels pretty important to what they're doing right now in Boston. So... Something to keep an eye out for. Dallas has a chance, uh, a little bit of an advantage there. You'll have KP back. So we'll see what Dallas does. They've been great on the road this year. At home is where they haven't taken care of business. I don't, off the top of my head, have the stat in front of me that tells you how long it's been since the Mavericks were, like when they were last 4-0 on the road. I know previously we were talking 2010 2011 just to you know give it the title year comparison in that regard i don't know about that but it's been it's been a hot minute for sure since the mavericks were 4-0 on the road and uh, i don't want to spend too much time hunting for this stat here so all i'm going to tell you is uh oh check out this great stat here from uh, mavs highlights on twitter since being traded to dallas justin jackson is 42 of 107 from three point from the three-point line that's 39.2 percent Open your eyes, he says. It's as if the thing that I've been saying since the summer has kind of continued to play out. Now, I'm not saying you got to, at this point, like, yes, you must start him. I'm not saying that, but get the man minutes. He had a quality performance tonight, and I feel like his leash has been abnormally short in recent games. So if we can get some more Justin Jackson, I'll feel better about that, but... I'm not going to harp on this too much longer. All that needs to be said is the Mavericks got a quality bounce back win. They move to 6 and 3 on the season through the first 9 games, 6 and 3, 4 and 0 on the road, and now they have to go into Boston and try to contend with the white hot Celtics. And hey, it's the Kimba Walker story. We keep hearing that if Kimba Walker hadn't gone to Boston, I said Kimba Walker, Kimba Walker hadn't gone to Boston, he would have gone come to Dallas. Now you're going to get your first chance to face him. And, uh, you know, you'll get your glimpse of what could have been over dramatic pause. But that's all my time for this video, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I will be back Monday night to talk after the Celtics versus Mavs game. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.